Now, I don't know exactly what happened on that one, but uh, is it solved yet, John? No, it's not. <laughs> not solved yet. I wonder if they came out to John's place and dusted the side of the house for prints and checked this and that and all this stuff. And I suppose if they didn't, uh, they might say, look, Mark, you know, we have so many of these. You can't expect us to come out. Yeah, we'll take the report over the phone and we'll give you a report number so you can submit it to your insurance uh, for insurance purposes and they'll pay you off. And that's pretty much going to be the end. But really, in my world, I would like an army of detectives coming out to the place, dusting everything for prints, checking every little thing, running it through the database, because damn it, that's what I expect. Maybe if they weren't testing so much green leafy stuff, they'd have a little bit more time and manpower to do that. Yeah. But this isn't quite that case, right? This is a known serial rapist. This is left breast swab from the left breast where the victim says, he did things to me on my left breast. His DNA might be on my left breast. This is, we happen to run the, the swab just to check, to see if there's biological material. And the answer is, yes, there is biological material. So to me, this isn't quite the same as John's house, we're too busy, that's just regular negligence. To me, I feel pretty comfortable that this is gross negligence, and I can't wait to put that question to a jury. And by the way, um, I've got really three purposes in bringing this case. My first purpose is because I represent my clients. They're my first obligation here, okay? Um, some of you, all of you, who haven't been down to the homes of the victim's families, like we have, don't quite understand, really, from a human perspective, the kind of, um, the kind of pain that they are going through. When I walk into the Nunez house, Sophia Nunez was one of the, the murdered people, and I walk into her mom's house, which I have probably five times now, and I look at their room and it's a shrine to her. I don't think there's another spot to put a picture of her on the wall, and I sit down at the dining room table, and I talk to her mom, and her dad, and her sister, and her kids about how much they miss her, and I think about what it must have been like for her young son to walk into the bathroom and find her bloody body having just been shot, laying in the bathtub, wondering if CPR would fix her, giving her CPR to try to save her life. <coughs> that's what this, that's the real net effect of them not doing what's so easy for them to do. That's the net effect. So, my first obligation is to my clients. I represent them to try to get them the answers they want and whatever kind of compensation I can get out of the city of Phoenix, I'm going to get. But more than that, I'm interested as a citizen because you guys live through the baseline murder scare as well. And damn it, we got a right to know what the hell happened. And I kind of see my role as a private attorney general. I'm on the case. I'm going to find out what happened. I am going to get to the bottom of exactly what happened. And as I've said, I think there's two boxes. There's the first <coughs> box, which I think is probably the bigger box. I'm going to label that good guys. Good. Then there's the other box, bad guys. And my job is going to be to figure out who is in what box and then report to everybody what's happened. That's the second kind of role that I feel that I have here. And the third is the other side of the drug war argument, where I started, right? I mean, what else do I need to say about that? Every time from this point forward, when I talk about the drug war and I talk about how we're wasting money chasing pot smokers, I'm going to talk about the baseline case and how the left breast swap sat in the freezer for 11 months while Mark Goudeau murdered eight people. Sitting with Mark Goudeau's STR DNA on it while Mark Goudeau's STR DNA was sitting in the database that Phoenix had access to. Questions about that? Uh, Mark, uh, 
regards to the lab work, you can't prove a negative. How can you prove a hot negligence? And, and, rather hot, and if, it's, if it's gross, uh, uh, if it's incompetent, in other words, if it's, uh, <coughs> they did it for any other reason, what's the motive? Yeah, well, my, um, my role is not to prove a negative. I have the affirmative burden in this case because I'm, I'm uh, normally I'm the defense attorney and so I'm arguing they don't have enough evidence. But in this case, I'm bringing the case. Okay, so I have the burden, and my job in this case, one of my jobs, is going to be to bring evidence to put in front of a jury that will hopefully convince them that the actions of the Phoenix Crime Lab in this case, given all of the circumstances and everything they knew at the time, was gro at least grossly negligent not ordinarily negligent. But you know, that's a jury call. I mean, a jury could say, um, well, this is ordinary uh, garden variety negligence, the kind of negligence that's just uh, regular, ordinary unreasonableness, not <coughs> grossly unreasonable. Close enough for government work. Yeah, I mean, they could say that, but man, if a jury in this community says that, Based on these facts, I think I'm going to find some other line of work. Because I think I'm probably done. I mean, what if they were breaking it up? Well, I got a couple of questions back here. Go ahead. Mark, isn't it almost impossible to get a jury to convict a, a law enforcement officer or find an agency negligent just because juries tend to like cops regardless of what the circumstances are? Um, well, first of all, you're asking me a question that's sort of outside my area because I don't generally bring, you know, civil type cases. But uh, what I'm expecting is that I'm going to have a parade of Phoenix PD detectives that are going to get up on the stand that are going to say, I tried my darndest. I asked and asked and asked and begged and pleaded for the crime lab to test the swabs. And I believe the police officers who I have been repeatedly calling heroes, are going to be on my side. And it's the lab workers, or non-police officers, who are the ones who failed to do the test. Now, I don't know uh, if there were other police officers higher in the chain of command directing the lab not to test. I would love that. Show me that. But I don't think we have that. But, but my job is going to be to lay it all out and uh, the jury is going to decide, but I, but I can tell you of the people that I've told this to, and just my own reaction, when I first heard this story, I think I just paused and I couldn't even speak for a little while because I was literally so angry, so angry that they had this in their hand and it could have been so easy for them to fix and they just didn't. Mark, so, um, Mark what was the next question? Over here. <coughs> More of a comment. I get so upset with the government. But if I'm reading it right, I'm no lawyer deal. But under Title 13, Section 1804, A7 and 8, when a government employee uh, prevents somebody from a service or a benefit that they're entitled to, and they were entitled to the test results, this is Class 4 felony. Could that possibly fit in against management for the lab? 13-1804, A7 and 8, when the government uh, fails to provide a service or a benefit. Well, uh, uh, just something to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it may be a good point, I don't know, but I don't have the ability to bring criminal charges. And right, so you'd probably know who could, I mean, if that thought well, was Well, that that's, that's a prosecutor that would, that would have to bring but that. But if the thought is valid, you might be able to start a fire on that side. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's a, it's a good thought. Uh, there's also statements, and if you look, if you get the amended complaint in, in, our, in the Arizona Constitution, that, all, that people have a right to, you know, swift justice and things like that. And so we, I put some constitutional provisions in there as well. But um, getting these people charged with crimes, if they do get charged with crimes, and even if they get punished with crimes, uh, doesn't really help my clients. Uh, and really, nothing can be done to help my clients other than to give them money. Now, let me just say this. You know, it sounds like, yeah, I give them money. But I want you to know, um, every single family that we represent, most of clients in this case are little kids who don't have their mom anymore. And um, to say that they shouldn't be compensated money for the loss of their mom would be outrageous to me. This is not a case where I'm going to have any problem standing in front of a jury 
in urging them to put a lot of zeros um, on the board for compensation here in terms of damages. This isn't this isn't some uh, you know crazy little frivolous case where they're not entitled to something. I think if I prove my case, the city of Phoenix is going to be in big, big trouble. Now. Um, I don't know what's going to happen if we get some big giant award and they're not able to pay. Uh, I'm not normally the kind of guy that has sympathy for them. And um, I, you know, I, I may do some research into how I can collect my judgment against the city of Phoenix. And if it involves attaching properties and things like that, wow, we could have some fun with that. Yeah. Who seem to be the lead proponents in the people stating we want to solve this crime the old fashioned way? I can't answer that right now because I haven't done the depositions. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be very, very conservative as we go through this. Things that, most of the things that I've told you are right here. And they're actually on uh, Freedom's Phoenix. Powell's taking a look at them. And uh, you can, if, you, if you don't want to take my word for it and you don't need to, the docs are right on Freedom's Phoenix. You can flip through and see they're still on there, right? You can see the lab reports. You can look at the left breast swab. You can see the results that they got. You can see the date. Every document that I gave them is on Freedom's Phoenix. So uh, I don't have anything that says, uh, hi, my name is so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, I'm the one who said I want to solve it the old-fashioned way. What I have is what we used to call in the Marine Corps scuttlebutt, um, that that was sort of those were some things being said. But by the way, I'm told, and I believe this is going to come out too, that there was a big meeting at a big table like this when DPS came in and said, here's what we found. And lots of the detectives were at that meeting. And uh, when DPS presented their results, somebody who was in charge of the Phoenix Crime Lab DNA section said, oh, that must have been the swab that we never tested. And the detectives looked at each other, flabbergasted, having been told for months that everything that could possibly be tested had been tested. And then, I think this is coming out too. And I'm going to be like a hound dog tracking this stuff down. I have no evidence right now. But I believe it's true. Um, there was then a cover-up that started. No. And there was pressure to not talk about it. And there were some heads that rolled. And there were some threats. And there was some, let's talk about the Y-Star DNA. And it's making about Y Star and uh, things like that. So, I, my uh, my mi one of my missions is to get to the bottom of everything here. What would you think the motive would be for them to be doing all this? Well, I don't have reason to think right now that somebody at the Phoenix Crime Lab said, "I don't want this thing to be solved. I'm going to stick it in the freezer." If I had a guess, uh, I wouldn't at all be surprised if somebody had the attitude, "Look, there's a lot of stuff to test here." And, you know, I'm uh, overworked and underpaid. I'll test the right. If the right doesn't have anything, I'm sure the left's not going to have anything. And we'll just, we'll see what's on it. And they test the right, it's inconclusive, and they just move on. And at some point shortly thereafter, um, the first murder happens. And then maybe they scratch their head and they think, we still got this left thing. But what if we test it now, and it comes back to Mark Boudot? Somebody's, somebody's going to be upset. They don't know there's ever going to be another murder, right? So they just go ahead and try to solve it the old-fashioned way. And while they're trying to solve it the old-fashioned way, murder number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, and eventually somebody says, maybe we should send it all over to DPS for Y-Star testing because DPS can do Y-Star and Phoenix can't. Oh, yay, we had a Y-Star match. We couldn't have had a Y-Star match earlier because we didn't know about Mark Udo's name. We're okay. Somebody like Mark Victor someday is going to accept an answer about Y-Star DNA, and that's going to be the end of that. And it almost happened. 